Hey guys, this is Craig Migliaccio with AC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is pressure testing a natural gas line or a propane gas line. So here we have a pressure test on our manifold. So this is where our meter would end up getting mounted at, but essentially I just built this little manifold just to kind of show you several different types of gas lines, and yes, this is galvanized gas pipe, and depending on your location, you may have galvanized or black iron, but the reality is in the International Fuel Gas Code, it does not differentiate between if you can use galvanized or black iron. But anyway, you have a manifold here, and we have several different styles of gas lines attached into here, and we're checking for a leak. So anytime that we are running a gas line in somebody's uh, building or house, uh, before we connect it into our appliances and into, say, a, a electrical gas valve such as this on a furnace or a water heater, we need to make sure that we pressure test the lines. So if you're taking a building and you're, you're initially running all the gas lines in the building, you're going to pressure test them first, and you're typically not going to have a valve like this on, and you're not tied into those appliances. Because if you are tied into those appliances, such as an electrical gas valve like this, when you pressure test it up to your, your pressure, say, 6 PSI, you're going to break your gas valve. So you don't want to do that. So you're running your gas lines within a few feet of the appliances, and you're, you're just capping them there. So this one happens to have a valve, or this one happens to have a valve, and you can have them in a gas line when you're pressure testing, but they cannot be in the off position such as this, because they're only rated for usually about a half of a PSI for stopping that amount of pressure. So they must be in the open position, and if you have an existing gas line at a building, you, you don't have to disconnect all these gas lines from the appliances in order to add one new gas line on. At least when you're, you're reading your International Fuel Gas Code book, and we have that link down in the description section below if you're looking for a link for that book, but most of the inspectors across the United States are using that or a, a variation of that but you just need to pressure test the new line that you're running into a building. So I've got some gas line sizing videos, I've got some other leak testing videos out there, and they're down linked in the description section below if you want to check those out. The reason that we're pressure testing at 6 PSI is, just so you know, natural gas runs at a quarter of a PSI, propane runs at about half of a PSI, and we're pressure testing all the way up at 6 PSI. Now that's all low pressure gas. You know, you may have some higher pressure gas systems, and they may be 2 PSI or something like that. But, but basically for low pressure gas lines, we're using a 30 pound pressure gauge, whether you have a, a pressure uh, assembly that looks like this, or another one that maybe has a, a bell type reducer and your gauge on it. But this is usually outside or somewhere that's accessible for the inspector to take a look at it. And what they're going to do is they're going to take a look at it. They might tap on the gauge, press on the Schrader valve, and see if the needle is pinned in place, which would be not, not correct. You know, you want to have your pressure gauge on here. You typically leave that for a day, usually beforehand. You're checking to see if it falls. Then you can call for your inspection. But when the inspector comes out, they're usually going to press in on this, see if the pressure falls. They're going to go and take a look at where the ends of your gas lines are. Make sure that they're close to where the appliances are supposed to be at, and and that's how they're going to inspect this. So after the inspection, you get a you go ahead and get your sticker, and what happens is this ends up getting disconnected right here, and usually either your your gas provider is going to tie in from here to your meter, or for, to your propane regulator. It just depends on where you're located at. You know you may be required to be the one that installs it from there to the regulator, but you know, you're going to have to follow whatever your, your local requirements are for that, for that part. Now, the reason we're pressure testing it for 6 PSI is we need to have the pressure higher than one-fifth of the gauge range. So our gauge range is 30, and 6 times 5 is 30, so we have it a little higher than 6. So that's, that's one requirement in the International Fuel Gas Code book. The other requirement is that we have to pressure test it above 3 PSI, and the third requirement is that it has to be pressure tested at least one and a half times the amount of pressure that you're going to be running through this system. So, so that's why we pressure test with a 30 pound gauge, or it could be a 15 pound gauge. So the, the smaller the gauge, the better, but we typically pressure test around six. So this is different from this uh, because this is just, this comes in short lengths and this is just a flex connector to attach an appliance on. And so, you know, you'd 
during a pressure test, you're typically just going to have this capped off. You're, you're probably going to have a cap right here before you even get to your valve, but anytime you're, you're connecting into, say, a furnace or a water heater, you're going to have a valve, a drip tee, and either a union or a flex connector. So, but this, these usually come in anywhere from 18 inch to, to five, six foot long, but these connectors are what you can use to attach onto, say, a water heater, and your water heater will be attached right, right in this location here. So that's just, just so you know what that is, and you can have a whole building pipe with, with copper tubing. And a lot of times this is found on, say, um, mobile homes and different, different, other, different other buildings, but they have just flare connections, and these ones are double flare connections, and so you got to make sure that you're cutting the, the tubing very smooth, but these are, you're typically prone to leaks if you don't cut the tubing correctly, so... Now let's get into, if you find a leak, so you pressure test the, 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 the gas line, so you go to lunch, you come back, you see that the pressure is lower, what you can do is tap on the gauge, you see that the pressure has, has fallen a little bit, and now you're going to be starting to search for your leaks. So we typically use bubble leak detector, and this is the brand I use from Rector Seal, and I have this link down in the description section below, but it has a little dabber, and you start dabbing basically all of your, your areas that you could have the leak at. So, and if I want to get bubble leak detector up into between the, the uh, yellow part right here and the brass connector, I'll just turn it like this, and then I got to wait and see if I see my bubbles. So, you're going to have to go around. You can listen for a bad leak if it's not holding any pressure, but if it's holding pressure and it's just dropping slowly, you're not going to be able to hear where that's at. So, you're going to hit all of your joints. So, all your threaded connections, you would already make sure that you've wiped the excess uh, thread sealant off of your threaded connections. And then you're going to go ahead and take your dabber and then rub that right along in there to see where your, where your leak is. Now I'm going to create a leak so you can see what a leak looks like on your corrugated stainless steel tubing and your, your copper and also on your Schedule 40 piping. It's also extremely important that you use anti-corrosive bubble leak detector and not dish detergent because dish detergent, they make it so corrosive now to try to clean, you know, basically reducing the amount of elbow grease it takes to clean a dish uh, so so there's a lot of more corrosive chemicals in it and the uh, regular dish detergents now so that's why I would recommend that you use a anti-corrosive bubble leak detector and that's sold specifically for that purpose and you know that it's going to bubble very very well if you don't use a bubble leak detector like this and then after you leak check you're wiping all these fittings down you're wiping the bubble leak detector off of these joints you're still going to have a little tiny bit on them. And so if you're using a dish detergent and water mixture, it can actually eat away at that corrugated stainless steel tubing and create a leak. So you don't want that. So if you leave it on the threads here, whether it's black iron or galvanized, if you even if you wipe it off, you come back maybe a year later, you're going to have like a quarter inch of rust coming out on that, on that thread a lot of times. So you want to avoid using using dish detergent whenever possible, you're just going to have your, your anti-corrosive bubble leak detector. If you're not doing a pressure test and you're searching for leaks on a live natural gas line or propane gas line, make sure that you're not using a lighter. So a lighter, um, you got to have the right, the right air to fuel ratio for there to even be a flame. And then you got to think about the byproducts of the flame in which you're, you're trying to, trying to make. <laughs> it's not, you're not even going to be able to find the leak using a flame. I just, I'm telling you this because there's a lot of people out there that are literally checking for leaks on gas lines with an open flame. And number two, it doesn't even look right. You know, so for uh, an average homeowner, they don't know about uh, combustion ratios and things like that. And they're just, they're just looking at you putting a flame on a pressurized gas line that's live, you know, with natural gas or propane. It just doesn't look right. So, so that's two things. You're not going to find all the leaks because if you have a small leak, you're not going to find it with a lighter. And, and if the only time you're going to find it with a lighter is if it's a big leak, it doesn't look right for the, for the homeowner or building owner. Just don't do that. Don't do that at all. So here you can see that we have bubbles forming here on the corrugated seal steel tubing and over on this joint up top. So these are little tiny bubbles that are forming and then moving down on this cap. It looks like they're coming from right up the top. And so this is what it looks like when you have a leak. You're going to have either a glistening happening, like some movement of bubbles, such as something like this, or you may have larger bubbles being blown like that. But that's what they look like. And then you just got to go ahead and fix those joints by taking, removing this off, you know, take the pressure off, maybe at the pressure test first, then go ahead and 
check your flare. You may have to cut the tubing and reflare it again or cut the corrugated stainless steel tubing and then tighten that again. Typically a double flare corrugated stainless steel tubing is, is formed, like the seal is formed by just tightening the nut. So all you have to do is make sure you have a nice clean cut and then you tighten that in and that should seal that joint. Over here you want to make sure that you have good thread sealant on that on that joint. You may have a nipple that has a crack in it as well. So here's a, a, a nipple where you have, you can see the weld in it right here. And this type of nipple right here that doesn't even have a, a thicker section is more prone to crack if it's over tightened. So you may also have maybe some threads that are cut off of this or the, the cap or maybe one of the, the, the nipple may have been used before and it's just not making a good seal where it tightens up to the cap at. So after you fix the leak, you just make sure that you are going to repressure test it again and make sure it does hold right above six PSI and then you're good. You can check out our website over at acservicetech.com where we have other resources there for HVACR technicians. If you're looking for more gas line videos, I have them linked down in the description section below. You can also support us over at patreon.com slash acservicetech. Hope you enjoyed yourself and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech channel.